Hello and welcome to what promises to be an absolutely mega swatching session today. We're going to be swatching all 45 colours in this set of paints. These are the Turner Acryl Gouache Japanese colours and there are 24 in this box and 21 in this box including some metallics which will be interesting to have a look at. Um, these came in a set so they come like this in two boxes and they're wrapped in a white cardboard sleeve which I've taken off and got rid of because we don't need that but I got them from Jackson's and the way this happened <laughs> is because I was actually looking in fact I'm going to open this up so you can have a look inside at the beautiful colours um, I was actually looking at these paints on their site because people have recommended them to me, someone else mentioned them again recently. I've known about them for a while. Um, the reason people mention them to me is because they think that the range of colours in the Japanese line would really, really suit me. So Turner do a range of acrylic gouache in like a regular kind of, I don't know what we call it, consistency. But apparently these ones mimic traditional Japanese paints in that they have a slightly rough texture when they're dry, which is really interesting to me. And the reason I hadn't bought them before now is because I was kind of uncertain as to whether I would like that or really hate it. So what I did is because I was so attracted to the colors, um, I actually researched them really thoroughly before I bought them. So I looked at YouTube videos and saw other people using them. I wanted to see exactly how much texture there was and I got a good idea of what they look like before I bought them. The reason I bought an entire set is because I was looking at individual colours and I was just going to choose a few that I really liked and try them out and Jackson's were out of stock of so many of them. They're not due back in stock until apparently January of 2022. And um, I thought it would also be really interesting to swatch this number of paints for you because I don't think we've ever swatched 45 different colors on this channel. Um, but I'm really excited about these paints. I already know that I love acrylic gouache because I use this one all the time in my work probably the past I would estimate maybe three or four years I've used the Holbein version of this um, theirs is called Acrylic Gouache and it comes in a range of really beautiful colours um, they do also a lot of really muted um, or soft kind of pastel-y colours which I really like so I've really enjoyed using this, but this has a very smooth consistency. Um, so that's why I was intrigued by this one, which is meant to be slightly different. So we're going to be having a look at that um, and looking at all of the different colours in depth. I'm also going to be using this new sketchbook that I bought from, I think this came from Cassart. Yes, it did, because I ordered this and a couple of extra Molotow markers as well. Um, but yes, I think Colt Pens do this sketch because, well, I'm not sure that Jackson's do this exact one. They do have some Strathmore sketchbooks. But I don't think they're the mixed media paper um, like this one. I've already taken that off, as you can see. <laughs> So this is like a really thick and very, very slightly textured paper. It's not as smooth as say a moleskin or the Royal Talon sketchbooks, which I tend to use. Um, the reason I had actually already taken this off is because I was so keen to try this sketchbook out that I did actually just swatch my colored pencil collection in the back of it yesterday. It was actually such a relaxing thing to do. I hope that's actually on the screen. <laughs> I can't see my camera screen from where I am so I'm hoping I'm holding that in the right place for you to have a look at it. But yeah that's my entire coloured pencil collection. I thought they looked so beautiful swatched out like that because I was so keen to just try this paper because it felt so amazing and I don't have a sketchbook 
with this kind of paper. And then I did my small Neo Color collection as well. So I'm going to be using the De La Rowney Graduate brush. Um, this is the round version, number four, uh, for the swatching. This is one of their really inexpensive range of brushes, but they're really good. I find them quite resilient. I use them a lot for acrylic and gouache painting, so they should be quite good for this. Okay, let's start with the white. I don't know how this is gonna show up on this paper. I'll just squeeze out a little bit of each colour into there. If any of you, by the way, can tell me um, where I can get the Turner Acryl Gouache in this country, in the UK, um, that isn't from Jackson's or Amazon, I would really love to know because I would like to have a larger white I use white a lot, I find, with the Holbein gouache. Um, so I know that I'm going to need a bigger tube than the one in this set. And yet, I can't actually <laughs> find it anywhere in stock. Jackson's don't have it in stock. And as I said, it's not going to be in stock until January of next year. Um, I think they're having some supply issues at the moment. I'm just going to write white <laughs> so we can actually see that there's something there. Um, yeah, so they're having some supply issues. So things are taking a long while to come back into stock sometimes when they're out of stock. There's a Windsor & Newton acrylic paint I've been waiting for for months now and they just keep putting the um, arrival date or whatever you call it back every time I look at it it's longer and longer until it's back in stock but um, yeah I'd love to know where else I can buy these I couldn't find them on any of the other art websites that I use um, they seem really hard to get hold of in this country and Amazon only had a few colors and the colors they did have were really super expensive um, so I don't really know what to do. I guess I'll just have to wait until Jackson's gets them back in stock, maybe. But they feel really nice. There is a slight grittiness to them, which is interesting because it's not too much. I'll swatch a few and um, I'll show you a close-up of them, actually, when they're dry. So what was this one called? This one was blue-grey. It's a really nice colour. And the next one along is dark grey. This actually looks kind of brown. This is going to be a really long, relaxing and I think fairly quiet video so if you want to put me on in the background while you do your own work, work on your own projects, whatever it is you're doing, or you just want to get a a drink and a snack. <laughs> it could be a good idea to do that. Well, I'm liking them so far. They feel really nice. Um, they don't feel too gritty, which I'm pleased about. Yeah, that's interesting, actually, this dark grey, because it is almost verging on black but it has kind of a brownish look to it a bit like a Mars black just want to have a closer look so I think, oh, those ones to weigh the page down a bit but yeah there is a slight texture there let's hold that up I don't know whether you can 
see what we'll do is we'll swatch some of the other colors because it might be a little bit more obvious with those just pop those back on that page that's the only thing with this sketchbook that I don't like I really love the paper I love the feel the quality feel of the overall sketchbook but it doesn't lay flat very well which is a little bit annoying but not enough to put me off it these paints by the way are in a kind of strange order in the box they've got um, some yellows and reds and pinks and I'll show you and then we go on to browns again which kind of they feel to me like they should be up here somewhere but um, then we go back to reds and pinks if I can bring this one round in this box so I'm just going to swatch them in the order that they put them in the box because I guess there must be a reason for this order give the brush a really good wash because we're going to do the yellow now. So what's this yellow? It's, it's just called pale yellow. That's a very pretty yellow. Do you know what my first impressions are? I think I'm going to really like working with these, which is a huge relief given that I bought a box of 45 but as I said I did research it quite well and I had a good idea that I would be liking them those of you who know me will know that it's very unusual for me to buy an entire set of paints or pencils or um, pens or whatever I usually buy just the different colors individually the ones that I'm really um, attracted to that I think will work with my color palette because I have a very um, sort of I don't know whether you call it like a defined color palette um, I really know what I like and don't like but recently I have actually been expanding my colour palette and I'm coming up with all sorts of different palettes and I'm really getting into using greens as well um, which I never used actually a while back so that's quite interesting um, but yes these colours there were so many that I just thought I'm gonna love these that I decided to take the plunge and go for the whole set um, obviously there'll be some that I use more than others so this is called deep yellow I don't use that much yellow in my work but I do like these slightly more sort of this looks like a little bit like a yellow ochre kind of color I don't know whether it will when it's on the page but yeah they feel really nice and you can feel there is a slight, um, I wouldn't even really call it a grittiness, sort of like maybe a sandiness to them, but that's going to be interesting. I always like texture in my work, so. I think this could be good for me. Okay, I think what I'll do, as we're going to be here forever, if we do this in real time is I will speed up this footage um, until I get to the end of this box and then we'll have a closer look at the colors and it will give the earlier ones a chance to dry so we can have a proper look at them so I'm going to play a little bit of music now and you'll see a slightly speeded up version of me swatching these <laughs>
So it's now the next day and I left these to dry overnight. I ran out of space while I was recording so I had to transfer all the footage and then it got late. So I decided to leave it until today and I'm glad I did because the light in here is quite good now. But um, yeah, you can see that they haven't dried up too gritty. I'm hoping that that is coming across on camera. I'll just tilt them very slowly and gently for you and hopefully you can see but they have a very matte texture it feels to the touch slightly rough but it's not too much i was worried it was going to be too gritty and you were going to see obvious like um, pieces of grit in there but no it just has a really nice interesting texture and i like how some of them seem to retain the brush strokes as well so that could be quite interesting to build more texture when i'm working with them but yeah really like these um i'm very very pleased with the texture that they have and this is what i would have wanted so i'm gonna pick out some of my favorites from this selection um I think they're a really nice palette, actually, these 24 on their own. But obviously we'll be swatching the other box of 21 in a moment. But my standout colours here, the ones that I'm really attracted to, that I would really be inspired by, are the blue-grey, the dark grey. Deep pink is really nice because that's a really nice um, dusky vintage kind of pink, which is the type of pink I tend to really, really like in my work. Um, red, brown, beige, these are all really nice. I think this would make a nice palette with these um, darker greens as well. I really like all the greens in this. We've got pale green, yellow green, olive green, deep green and black green. They would all look fantastic together in a landscape where you're using a real palette of greens and you just want lots of different types of green, which is what I tend to be moving towards at the moment in my work. Um, really nice blues as well, pale blue, dark blue and black blue. So what we'll do next is we'll swatch this box. This one has 21 different colours, including this row of metallics along the bottom here. I don't use metallics that often, but I do now and again, so it's nice to have a few. Um, I think when you buy these separately, by the way, the metallics, um, I think when I saw them on Jackson's, were £5 a tube. And these, I think, were £3.40 a tube for the normal colours, um, which makes this set of 45 a really good buy, because if you add them all up, um, if you were buying them separately, they'd come to quite a bit more than you pay for the set, which is quite interesting. So even if you're not going to use some of the colours, it could be a good idea to actually buy the set because it's such a good deal. But yeah, let's start um, by swatching from the top here. We'll go across and we'll see what they look like. swatched out all of the regular colours in the set now. So you get 36 regular colours and then you've got nine metallics which we'll swatch out in a moment. But I think you could probably pretty much paint anything with this set because it's such a nice balance of colours. I'm really loving some of the very dark ones like the black purple on the bottom row there. They're still drying at the moment but they dry quite quickly. I would say they probably dry at about the same rate as the Holbein acrylic gouache. So I'm used to that. So yes, if you use these paints um, and you're not used to really quick drying paints, you have to be careful not to squeeze too much out in one go um, because they will dry on the palette quite quickly. And obviously you can't re-wet them once they're dry, but um, that makes them fantastic if you like working in layers because obviously you can layer really quickly. You don't have to wait for ages for one of the layers to dry. But this Prussian blue is beautiful as well. That's a really inky blue. And I really like the 
um, pastels like the pale lilac, the pale pink, the pale blue and the pale green. Just so many nice combinations here and I think what I'm going to do is on this side of the sketchbook is work on some mini palettes in a minute so put together just smaller palettes of colours that I feel would go really well together for different paintings and we'll have a little look at that how well they work together but for now I'm going to just swatch the metallics and we'll have a look at those. <laughs> interesting they're like a very earthy selection of metallics and I love the what they're calling the black silver which is this one it reminds me a bit of pewter I'm going to hold up the swatches so you can have a better look this is what they look like they're not like um, super shiny but they have yeah you can see there if I just tilt it like that they have a very subtle metallic look really loving them. I think they work nicely together as a small metallic palette actually. The ones that really stand out to me and that I think I could use a lot in my work are the blue gold, the blue bronze, possibly the copper. The red bronze is really nice as well. Um, the black silver that I said reminded me a little bit of a pewter colour. That's still drying so that looks a bit funny. Um, black gold is lovely too. I feel like <laughs> I've just mentioned pretty much all of them, but yeah, they're really nice. Um, they've actually exceeded my expectations because I'm not super into metallics. I'm getting a little bit more into using them in my work because I think if you use them in a subtle way, as like a little highlight here and there, um, they really work well and they work better for me that way. So say if I was painting a little key or something like that, I might paint it in this blue bronze colour. Or if I wanted a really nice golden moon, I might use the blue gold. So this is what the entire set of 45 looks like. And as I said, I'm really enjoying the texture of them. It's not too gritty at all. As you can see, some of them seem to hold their brush strokes a little bit more than some of the other colours. Some of them are really flat, like for example the blue bronze and the red bronze. They look really flat, whereas the black silver and the green gold, for example, have um, a little bit more streakiness where the brush has gone. But that's quite interesting because you can sometimes use that to your advantage. It adds a little bit of interest and texture. Um, some of them seem to be grittier than others as well. I noticed in particular that the red, for example, seemed to have a lot of whatever it is they put into these paints to make that texture. Um, but that doesn't bother me because I quite like the variation in that. And I think that can also be used to your advantage. So yeah, that's what they look like. Really nice set of largely muted colors, pastel-y colors. You've got some slightly more regular colors. I mean, but even the orange, for example, isn't a super bright orange, and even the reds seem to have a slight subtlety to them, so you haven't got anything that's too in your face, which I really love. So let's have a little go at um, just putting together some palettes on this side and see what we can come up with. <laughs>
just been enjoying swatching some of the colours and playing around with different mini palettes. I wanted to see how all of the greens in the set look together. So there were seven in total. The one on the end on the right is the metallic green gold, I think it was called. Um, that's much more transparent than the other ones. So if you wanted that to be a bit more heavy, you'd have to layer it. A bit more opaque, rather, you'd have to layer it. Um, but the other ones are really opaque, beautiful shades of green. So I'm going to look forward to using those in a landscape soon. The next row is just showing all of the different blues. I included the blue-grey in this row as well. Really love those. I think this set has a really good selection of greens and blues. And then I decided to just swatch some of the softer pinkish red tones with the beige. So this one on the end here is the red brown. And then the next one is, sorry, I'm having to move to the side because I've got them. Oh, you can't see. <laughs> They're at the top there. Um, they're on the table so I could remember. So the next one along is the deep pink and then the pale pink and then the beige. And I think those four together make a really nice little palette. So the next row along, I chose some of the blues that I thought would be really good night landscape blues. And I've added the metallic um, black silver, the one that looks like pewter. I thought that would be really nice in a night landscape. A really lovely rich dark brown. Which brown was that? Oh, it was just called dark brown. So that's dark brown and the blue grey again. I think that's a nice night landscape palette and you could also add, um, obviously I'd balance it out with some white and also um, possibly some of that gorgeous gold as well. The blue gold was it? The slightly cooler toned one. Um, and at the bottom here we have a few colours that would make a really nice autumnal landscape. So I used the deep yellow, um, the yellow brown, strong orange, beige, and I think that one was the yellow red. So I just had a little play around and yeah, they're just such beautiful colours. I look forward to using them in my work and I'm sure you'll see that happening on the channel sometime soon. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that swatching session. Um, let me know whether you would consider buying this set or whether you're interested in trying the Turner Acryl Gouache yourself, whether that's the regular range or this Japanese range. So I hope that was a helpful video if you're interested in these paints. Thank you for watching, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you again soon in the next video.